the Pope gives aid to transgender prostitutes with no customers, and people are doing a new viral challenge by peeing in their pants on video, and German zombie hunters were stopped at the Swedish border with a vehicle full of weapons. These are the weird news stories for Wednesday. This is Weird AF News. I'm your host, Jonesy. We do three weird stories from around the world, per usual. This is the only daily weird news podcast. Hosted by a comedian during the pandemic. Smoke a fatty and laugh it up with Jonesy in Weird AF News. Oh, yeah. The Pope gives aid to transgender prostitutes who don't have customers right now. Isn't this Pope a nice fella? He cares about the prostitutes. He cares about the transgender prostitutes, which is a very specific prostitution niche. Pope Francis assisted a group of transgender prostitutes who were just struggling financially amid the coronavirus pandemic in Italy, as most transgender prostitutes are doing these days. It's a struggle financially if you're just a prostitute because, you know, we're told to keep a distance. I mean, how... How can you serve your clients from six feet away? I don't know if there's some sort of new sexual inventions that are going on um, as a result of the social distancing that's required. I mean, I don't know. Are prostitutes getting creative? Are people getting creative sexually to still have sex and please your partner from six feet away? Is this going on? At the height of the coronavirus emergency, a group of transsexuals, almost all Latin Americans, arrived in the church with amazement and wonder. They asked for help because with the virus, they no longer had customers on the street. They went all the way to the Vatican to ask the Pope for help. If I'm a transgender prostitute, the last person I would expect to help me would be the Pope. Um, Yeah, but they did. They reached out to the Pope through one of the cardinals, Cardinal Conrad Krajewski, Krajewski, who happens to be the the papal almoner. I don't know what this is. P-A-P-A-L. A-L-M-O-N-E-R, a papal almoner. I guess he's like, uh, he answers the Pope's emails or something. I don't know. He's responsible for charitable work done in the name of the Pope. Oh, okay. Francis's response was immediate, the media reports. Many thanks to Pope Francis. May God bless you. Thank you for everything. A thousand blessings, a thousand blessings. May the Virgin protect you. Well, you don't have to say that virgin comment. We're talking about prostitutes here. It does not appear that the leader of the Catholic Church was signaling any changes in Catholic teaching on gender and sex. Well, why wouldn't you? If you're going to support the transgender prostitutes, you should also change your stance on gender and sex. Be open. But it's nice that you help them, nonetheless. Um, Pope Francis said that he did not want to discriminate against anyone, but was... um, convinced that human peace and well-being had to be based on the reality that God created people with differences and that accepting, not ignoring those differences is what brings people together. Good for you, Pope Francis. That's the, that's exactly the way you should approach um, different people and their different genders and their different sexualities and uh, you know different walks of life. You should just embrace them all because that's what Jesus would have done. So I love to see that. It doesn't say what Pope Francis did for the transgender prostitutes. I don't know if he gave them a um, a charitable donation or he just blessed them. I don't know. It doesn't say. Um, but you know, you got to feel bad for prostitutes these days. I mean, it's just a tough. It's a tough racket in general, and and right now it's got to be even tougher. I mean, I I I thought it was terrible that I can't get on stage and make my money doing stand up. But can you imagine being a prostitute right now? Terrible, terrible. And uh, this story reminds me of another story that I that I saw that um, it was it was questioning whether or not sex work was an essential service do- during COVID nineteen. Um, do you think sex workers are providing what is uh, categorized as an essential service? Um, of course, this would refer to countries where or states where sex work was actually legal. So, um, some places in Europe and. And the state of Nevada here in the U.S., um, in places like that, should um, you know sex workers be covered in the government's economic support response to the coronavirus pandemic? What do you guys think about that? I'd love to hear from you. Call the show, 646-450-2012. People on social media 
are peeing in their pants on video because of a viral challenge that's being presented and lockdown boredom. If you're so bored that you'd pee your pants, I mean, I don't know what kind of life you have. I mean, get to work, man. I mean, aren't you busy trying to, you know, figure out how to get frozen pizza into your freezer? I mean, what? <laughs> I am. I'm trying to figure out how to make money. Okay, I don't have time to just pee my pants on video. What a luxury that is. And by the way, who cares? Who wants to see someone pee their pants on video? Apparently, people do. These videos are being viewed. The challenges are being met. It's unbelievable to me. The article says, We've all heard of the different social media challenges. Some of these tend to be more bizarre than others. There was that one where you eat glitter to make your poop sparkle. I don't remember seeing that one. By the way, I don't want to see that one. I don't want to see your poop. It's bad enough. I've seen some photos of people peeing their pants right here. Eating Tide Pods. You remember that one? That was a dangerous one. You risked your life for that one. Now the new trend is starting to take off. It's the pee your pants challenge. The pee your pants challenge refers to a social media trend where participants record themselves urinating into their pants and uploading it. <laughs> Just when you thought you heard it all. It's, it's unbelievable. It began on TikTok late April. One video that was uploaded had over 200,000 views in one week. Quickly, it was hashtagged with a challenge and then other idiots started doing it as well. Yeah, the key is to shoot the video of your entire body so that we can see the wet spot appearing on the front of your sweatpants or shorts or whatever it is. We also want to hear the pee trickling down your leg onto the floor. This is graphic graphic nonsense. And, I mean, the people that are participating in this are just out of their minds. Out, you're out of your mind that you would upload a video of you, a video of you peeing? Do you have any idea how you're going to get a job after this? Really? Does this ever cross your mind? Yeah, we'd love to hire you, to, but we saw a video of you pissing your pants. You stupid idiot. Get out of my office. One individual in the media was quoted as saying, you know, I'm very surprised to see that people on the Internet will pee themselves if you just call it a challenge and simply add a hashtag. But they're doing it. Yeah, because you're you're overestimating people. Um, should I be specific and say American people? Just dummies, dumb young people. And really, what an inappropriate challenge during a pandemic that probably can be spread through uh, body, bodily liquids, I'd imagine. Body fluids spread this. So you have a challenge where people are just peeing all over the place. Great. Great idea. And sadly, the pee your pants challenge hashtag currently has 4 million views on TikTok. <laughs> Not including the other platforms like YouTube or Instagram. This is just... Are you that? I mean, these, they're saying that this is a bunch of chuckleheads who are bored during the lockdown, lockdown, trying to keep themselves entertained. But I think it's more than that. I think it's brain damage or something. <laughs> you have to have something wrong with you if this is how you approach boredom, you know, to piss yourself and let the whole world see you do that. <laughs> this is the downfall of our of our whole society right here. It's unbelievable. We're going to look back on this generations from now. They're going to ask. Well, what, what, why was that coronavirus so rampant in the culture? Well, because, you know, people weren't spending time trying to cure the damn thing. They were too busy uh, shooting videos of themselves, pissing their own pants and uploading it. That was how we, re we responded to our, our version of the plague. <laughs> we made videos of us pissing our pants. And, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't seen a uh, hand sanitizer shot challenge as well, where people do shots of hand sanitizer. Um, I mean, because this is the kind of stuff that, that I see in my culture, just out of your mind nonsense. And, you know, I blame, I blame the parents. I blame, that's right, parents. I blame you. German zombie hunters were stopped at the Swedish border with a car full of weapons ready to fight the zombie apocalypse. Unbelievable. How bored are people during the COVID lockdown? You, you create a team of zombie hunters to fight something that doesn't exist? This rather curious incident took place weeks ago. It was recently publicized in the media. The images released by the Swedish Customs Agency show that this couple, a man and a woman, zombie hunters, they arrived at the Swedish border in a Hummer vehicle 
that had a logo on the side that said zombie response team, along with a warning that said infected people will be shot. I'm looking at the truck now. Yeah, it's a very expensive vehicle, by the way. <laughs> These people have a lot of money and time on their hands. Are you sure this wasn't a vehicle that was just stolen from the set of a TV show or a film? I mean, that's what it looks like. There's a photo of all their weaponry that I guess they were going to use to fight zombies in their own imagination. Oh, this is very scary. It's very scary that people can just acquire whatever weapons they want um, right now. I just, I'm very afraid because some people are absolutely mad out of their minds and they can just go and get, I don't know, a Hummer filled with crossbows. That just seems weird to me. <laughs> How am I going to bring babies into world into the world when someone can order a Hummer filled with crossbows uh, and they're out of their minds, okay? In their possession were many illegal weapons, it says, about 20 of them. It included several crossbows, a taser, another form of electric shock weapon that they don't know what it is, <laughs> several firearms, designed to fire tear gas canisters, several tear gas canisters as well, a knuckle iron, and at least one truncheon. I don't know what those things are. They sound dangerous. What the hell is a knuckle iron? I'm looking at shotgun shells here. That's what it looks like to me. This pistols, I can see in the photo, a rifle f for sure. Many crossbows. I guess that's their weapon of choice for zombies. Oh, boy. The report says that the couples claimed that they didn't know the weapons could be legally brought into the country. <laughs> they were reportedly on their way to a summer house, which they had recently purchased in the southeasterly Blekinge region of Sweden. <laughs> no, we're just off to our summer home. Actually, they were German. so they're, Yes, that's right. We've bought a summer home in Sweden recently. We have many crossbows for doing some hunting. <laughs> I know, I know what it looks like, that we are zombie hunters, but it's just a joke. <laughs> let us go, let us pass. <laughs> Don't mind the tasers. Some Swedish media have speculated that the couple are part of a role-playing association as a means of explaining the zombie response team, but there has yet been no confirmation as to whether this is the case. Oh, that's a, that's just a sorry ass excuse for having a Humvee. That had zombie response team on the side. No, no, no. We're role playing. <laughs> we're role playing with a Humvee filled with crossbows. This is role playing. You know. No, no, no. Uh, my definition of role playing. I'm sorry. Is uh, you're you're playing a game online or an app on your phone or you're you know, maybe you're an, an ultra nerd and you went out and you got your Dungeons and Dragons dice and you meet with your friends in person or through Zoom or something and you play D and D. I don't think role playing involves going out and buying the actual weapons, real weapons. You know, this isn't LARPing as well. You know, LARPing is something that I don't know if you guys know about that, but you go out and you pretend to be a, I don't know, a, a warrior or a wizard and you pretend fight with a bunch of other nerds, but they don't take it this seriously. This, these people were on their way to do what, who knows what, um, <laughs> and, and should be stopped. This is scary that you can even put together this. This whole cachet of weapons and Humvees. I mean, I'm just like, what the hell? But, you know, you know what's nice about it is, is this didn't happen in America. Because this is where I expected this to be going down. I'm like, oh, this is the U.S. Of course it is. Of course it is. You can go get a Hummer filled with weaponry um, and drive it anywhere you want for the most part. <laughs> like, this is in Europe. I see they're taking up some of our, some of our pastimes. All in the name of role play. Yes, yes. We're very bored during the lockdown, so we thought we would pretend there was a zombie outbreak. You know, <laughs> like we're kids again. I don't know what you do with people like this, but I hope that you don't let them go quite yet. There's, there needs to be some more questions answered, I think. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that? Or do you <laughs> call, call the show. I don't know how you couldn't. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. I never knew news before till weird AF news till weird AF news.
I'm in a singing mood, guys. What can I say? I'm highly over-caffeinated. Have you had coffee that has four times the caffeine than regular coffee? Wow, does it do things to you. And when I say do things, I, I mean immediately run to the toilet after one sip. <laughs> yeah, but I took care of that. <sighs> oh, boy. Classy, right, guys? There's Jonesy being classy. Hey, thanks for listening to the episode of Weird AF News. I hope you guys are safe with your loved ones, dealing with the lockdown in the best way possible, listening to a podcast. And if you like Weird AF News, please tell a friend because I think other people might dig what we got going on over here. Bring them into the club, guys. Bring them into our little cult here. Um, Yeah, it's better than mainstream news. At least you get a laugh out of it. You get to laugh at uh, stupid people peeing their pants. Why not? Um, Please don't make a video of you peeing your pants. I don't know if I said that earlier in the segment, but I don't condone this behavior. It's really, it's really juvenile, and it's a sign of mental illness. So uh, there's, if you got a problem, before you pee your pants, just call me, man. We'll talk about it. Let's talk it out. If you're really bored, don't pee your pants. I can suggest some things to uh, relieve you of your boredom. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm doing crazy stuff all the time. In fact, I could, I can recommend a comedy special right now from a comedian friend of mine named Lachlan Patterson. L-A-C-H-L-A-N Patterson. Go to his website, LachlanPatterson.com, and, and watch his comedy special. You can watch it for free there, and it's a great way to spend the afternoon. Jerry Seinfeld just came out with a comedy special on Netflix. So listen, go out and support your comedians out there in the world like me. And, uh, you know, that's a good way to get rid of your boredom Uh, and pay attention to me on my social media. So maybe you can catch one of my live stream comedy shows. I was on one last night uh, and I was at the Laugh Factory last week and I'll be going back there. So you can watch me live on the Laugh Factory in Hollywood's stage. Follow me on Instagram for all those updates at Funny Jones. Okay, you can email me funnyjones at gmail.com. And that is also my PayPal address if you want to send me a cup of coffee or a small donation to get me through the lockdown. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. I got a Patreon that has all sorts of lovely things on there, extra stuff for you to take in uh, and sort of help out with your boredom. Bonus episodes, videos, etc. stuff that you can read, things to watch, weird documentaries, weird videos that I shot. Oh, yeah, good time. It's patreon.com slash weirdafnews. Yes, bring your weirdo to a new level by supporting Weird AF News. Why not? I'm in a closet recording this show five days a week. The least you can do is give me two bucks. I mean, right? Come on. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Oh, my mother would be proud right now. What can we say? By the way, have you called your mother? You should. There's a pandemic going on. Okay, show her some love. Uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, uh, yeah, please call the show anytime if one of these stories... Uh, really resonates with you and you have an opinion. I'll publish some calls after this outro, um, some of the regulars that have called in. And I appreciate everybody who takes a moment to reach out to me, to call in, to send me a message. It It makes me very happy inside. I'm getting a lot of response on Instagram, at Funny Jones, so that's a good place to get a hold of me. But also, you can on Twitter, at Funny Jones, and on Facebook, Comedian Jonesy. All right, I've, I feel like I've tried to sell myself enough here and that you're pretty much annoyed with it. So let's, let's end it with some calls, and we'll see you tomorrow, my friends. If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast, and also make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify and make your life easier. Hey. Hey, Jonesy. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's Finn. Just wanted to, sorry I'm late. I uh, wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Um, uh, also, um, um, would love to say a few things to the rest of the Weird AF News family, uh, is that, uh, I hope all of you are safe. You are practicing proper social distancing. And I hope you and the rest of your family have not been affected too much by this event. Um, oh, and also, Jonesy, you may or may not be getting a PayPal donation from me real pretty soon, because I, my mom finally paid me my allowance for doing my chores, so, woo, $10, I know, right? Anyway, uh, so you might be getting a 5 to $6 donation to your PayPal pretty soon. All right.
I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, Jonesy, this is Tom Welliver, uh, formerly from Los Angeles, now in North Carolina. Hey, um, if you want to sanitize your, your cheap masks, I know I use them too. I used to use them. Uh, soak them in uh, at least 70% alcohol for about 10 minutes, and then hang them to dry, you know, squeeze them out a little bit and hang them to dry. Um, I work at a grocery store, so we got to, you know, I reuse a lot of masks. I've actually converted from masks to, um, cause I'm so busy working and sweating and, you know, we're in the south, so it's getting, it's starting to get hot. So I actually cut, um, the sleeves off old t-shirts and they work really good, really good. And you can just throw them in a the wash and if you don't want to, you just throw them away and out of their old shirt. Hot right, man. Keep up the good work. Hey, Jones, it's Michael from Iowa City. I heard your story yesterday about a woman who was making sperm smoothies, and her claim was that she was using it to keep herself from getting the COVID-19 virus. And you made a disclaimer that Weird AF News did not condone its use in that way. And you are correct. It's not powerful enough to keep you from getting that virus if you're exposed to it. But sperm uh, ingestion definitely is an immunity booster. I can tell you from my... 30 years in the medical field as a biological background and uh, working in the pharmacy and the laboratory for 30 years that there are definite benefits uh, to the ingestion of sperm. Um, it is an immunity booster. Uh, there are particles and um, materials in the seminal fluid that sustain the sperm as it his intended purpose is to uh, fertilize the egg. There are nutrients and antimicrobials in there. The antimicrobial is um, seminal plasmin, and it is a potent antimicrobial. So if a woman were to have a sore throat, so to speak, and she were to receive a deposit of sperm, uh, she could definitely see benefits to her sore throat from the seminal plasmin because of its antimicrobial properties. And uh, if she were to be, let's say, in the process of um, trying to have a baby, the sperm uh, has nutrients in it and antimicrobial things to help sperm along its way to its path to fertilize an egg. So the ingestion of sperm definitely does have immunity boosters in it. And the um, women who regularly ingest sperm orally, they have a lower frequency of miscarriages because their immunity is boosted and they have a lower frequency of miscarriage. Uh, there is also another way to use it, and that would be on the skin. Some women do sperm facials. There is something called spermine, S-P-E-R-M-I-N-E, and it has powerful antioxidant qualities that would reduce wrinkles, smooth the skin, uh, reduce acne and other spots on the skin. And there are, as I have said, um, definite benefits to use of this for a number of different things. Again, the antimicrobial properties in the um, sperm would be beneficial to the skin. So, Yes, definite antimicrobial and immunity booster products in the uh, sperm. So, um, hey, Jones D. Dallas from Minnesota. They got a comment on the, um, the Russian story you had where the guy jumped out of the window. But when you first were telling that, I thought it was another story that I read, but then you said the guy died. Because I read another story where a guy did the same thing, uh, jumped out a window but also had videos of, you know, complaining about the working conditions, working while on uh, with COVID, jumped out the window, lived, and then while on his uh, hospital bed, he recants his story and says it wasn't true. So it's a very interesting story that's happening, obviously happening in a communist country. So, uh, you know, who knows what exactly is really happening there. Um, but a very interesting story. About the 
a uh, guy going around town in the plague outfit. I'm actually surprised that you haven't seen that outfit before because he seemed pretty uh, up to date on a lot of historical type things and the weird and stuff like that. Um, so it, it, it is kind of a strange scenario to hear that you haven't ever heard or seen of, uh, that uh, um, that outfit before. Um, I actually think it's kind of funny that someone's going around. You know, it is boredom, but it, 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 it seems seems adequate. I don't see why the police have to get involved in something like that, uh, unless the person was, like, flashing people, you know, walking around and flashing them or being really, uh, uh, you know, harassing other people. Otherwise, I would just take it as a joke, and, uh, and, and I don't see why people need to act so fearful over something like that. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's just funny how people are just reacting to all this. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really time that we just open everything up. I know I've said that before, but it really is. Uh, we are going to have more depth by keeping things closed than, uh, than opening up. Mass starvation will happen, uh, you know, mass suicides, domestic assaults, things like that will all start going up, and they already have been going up uh, because of this uh, uh, event. And more people are going to die from other things. Than, than COVID, the more we keep people locked up. It's a, it's really time we get people back in the workforce, uh, back to working. You know, if you're scared, wear a mask. Uh, but uh, it's, it, it, there's no sense destroying the economy and destroying, you know, free will, things like that. Um, but going on, on the, on the plague story, maybe something that you don't know since you didn't know about the mask. The uh, old nursery rhyme, uh, Ring Around the Rosie, is actually completely about the plague. 